This is the lock picking Apache Pilot, and what I have for you today is this master lock combination padlock. In this video, I'm going to show you how to decode one of these master locks. This video go, will go in more detail than some of my other videos. Uh, if you want to learn how to do this in just about four minutes, then check out one of those other videos. But this will have more detail and a few drawings to explain what's going on inside the lock. How to find the first digit. You're basically going to spin it clockwise. It's gonna, you're gonna feel that you know moves perfectly smooth. It doesn't get stuck at any of the numbers. But then I'm gonna put an index finger in the shackle here and lift up just slightly. You can see how this moves about almost an eighth of an inch or not quite a quarter of an inch, but there's a lot of play in there. Just gonna slightly lift up, take up maybe half that play and still spin the dial. And what you can notice in this lock is it's getting snagged right around the number nine, number 10 or so. And if I stop it where it's snagged and I lift up, it even rotates the dial over to come right in at number 10. So what this is telling me is that my true digit for the first uh, combination number is gonna be 15. Cause I'm gonna take my 10, add five and get 15. And that's my first number in the combination. You can verify this by going counterclockwise with similar pressure. And after a couple turns, what you're gonna feel is that the lock will just stop. Very hard stop. And if I pull up on that shackle again and find out where it's fitting in there, you see in this one, it's locking in right at about one to zero. Now, if I add 14 to whatever the number is where I get stuck here, then that also points to my first number, which in this case is again about 14 or 15. Really any number in the combination within one or two digits of the actual combination number will likely open the lock. So that's just a way to check you yourself on the first digit is to go, go counterclockwise with some pressure and see where you get really stuck. It might take a couple turns to get there. And then look at that and say, where is that landing? In this case, it's like between one and two. Try to wiggle it around here. So it's, it's probably zero or one on this one. Add 14, and then I get back to my number 15 again. So very confident that 15 is the first digit on this lock. Finding the second digit is again done by feel. So I'm gonna just spin my lock to reset it. Give myself a little bit of tension here. I'm gonna go counterclockwise. A couple turns, about two and a half turns or so. And then you're gonna feel it lock. And it's gonna lock up pretty hard there. This is um, hitting right about one, right? One or two here. Now, if I go back a couple of turns, say about two and a half turns, I'm gonna hit another stop on the other side. In this case, is right around my nine or 10 when I was doing this going clockwise. So in between these two numbers, those figure those are my limits, I'm gonna be able to find my middle digit to the combination. So I'm gonna keep those two limits in mind and you're gonna feel it so you're not gonna have to worry much about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up and I'm gonna do my counterclockwise about two and a half turns till I hit that wall. And there's the wall right there. I cannot, I cannot physically turn this anymore. So I'm gonna raise the shackle slightly, enough so I can turn it, and so it's not getting stuck on every little bump in there. And I'm gonna spin until I feel a slight tension, and here I feel it at about 29. I'm gonna keep going to see if I get another one. Doesn't look like I am. I'm getting it again at 29. I've just got slight tension, but I'm not feeling any of the other parts of the lock catch, except when I get past 29. And now the lock stops. So I've hit that left limit. Like I told you, there's a left limit and then there's that right limit. So I'm gonna head and spin it again counterclockwise, a couple turns, two and a half turns or so. It's gonna lock up again, which it did. And the only reason why this is catching and doing this is because I've got that light tension here. It's not much at all, it's very light. But now when I go back away from that boundary and go back to the left, 
I'm still getting that rub only in one spot on the whole dial, and it's right there at 29. So what that means for us is 29 is our second digit. It's just that easy to find that second digit, 29. So we've got two of the three digits. Now, you could just go ahead and dial that in and use trial and error to figure out what the third number is. Uh, but here's another way that's a little bit more scientific to find it. What I'm going to draw for you is a very simplified version of what it looks like inside the lock. So I'm just going to freehand this, and, and it's not meant to be an exact model here, but this will give you a feeling for what is going on inside the dial there, inside where the uh, tumblers are, I guess you could say. And what I'm doing here is I'm drawing basically six lines in a circular pattern uh, to show that inside the lock there are these 11 gates or portions of the, of the dial that are solid. In other words, there's metal all throughout in here. But then as I get to this one portion at the end here, there's an opening, and this is called the gate. And what happens is when all your dials and your numbers are lined up properly, and these are synchronized, these three gate openings here, then that means the piece holding the, the hasp in, in, in a locked position can be released. And this space in here is going to correlate to our third digit. So what I'm going to do to, to identify this space and, and find it, by finding it, I'll get that third digit, is I'm going to look at all the other ones very methodically and see where there's a difference in that pattern. And one way to do this uh, easily and not lose track, because you know, you're talking about 40 numbers on the dial, and I need to look at 12, 12 areas very closely. This is one, area, one way I found to do it that makes it a little, little easier. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it in terms of sections on the dial. I'm going to look at 0, 10, 20, 30. Then I'm going to look at uh, a number in between 0 and 5, and then a number in between 5 and 10. So when I go around and do that, each of those three sections, then I'm going to be able to monitor for that pattern and find one that's different. Okay, so if I'm looking at my first round, I'm going to look at the 0, then I'm going to look at the 10, then I'm going to look at the 20, and then I'm going to look at the 30. Okay, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of split the difference here on either side of the 5. I'm going to look at some, some area here around the number 3, then I'm going to do around 13, and then around 23, and then around 33. And then I'm going to go on the other side of the 5, and I'm going to look for something around 7, 17, 27, and 37. So that's just going to help keep it straight as I'm checking uh, the different positions on the lock. Okay? So, for the first batch, I'm going to look at all these numbers here that end in 0. And I'm going to be looking for a pattern in the way it feels when, I am, when I've rotated the dial into this physical metal gate, this, this, this bowed-in section here, where as I wiggle the dial back and forth around this zero, I get a sense of movement. Now, how much does it move? Does it move half uh, a digit? Does it move a whole digit? Does it move... A digit and a half, that's going to tell me um, what the pattern is. And the pattern should be similar between all of these numbers until I find the one that's my true number three combination. That one's going to be different. That number is going to tend to be a little bit uh, wider and it's going to tend to lean more to the right. And by the right, I mean towards the number that's on the right. 
and you'll see that um, uh, play out. So a couple ideas here to write down. It's a little bit wider, and it's a little bit on the right side. All right, so let's take a look at the dial on the lock and see how we can analyze this diagram. So I'm going to start with zero, and I'm going to set my dial to zero, pull up hard on the shackle, pulling very hard, and I can feel that movement, and it's representing this false gate in here, potentially false gate, and I'm wiggling that and seeing that it's moving between 39, just a little bit over 39, maybe it's 39.2 to zero, and that's where the movement is. So now I'm going to compare it to the next section. I'm going to do this four times. I'm going to do 0, 10, 20, and 30. I'm going to do 10, pull up, wiggling. Look at that movement. It looks very much like the movement we just saw around the 0 from 9 to 10. We go to 20, pull up again. That looks the same again from 19 to 20. I'm going to go to 30, pull up again. From 29 to 30, looks about the same. Okay. So, for the first um, set of four, they all looked very similar. I did not see anything that looked different. None of the gaps looked wider than others. None of them seemed to register in at the right side. But now let's look at the 3, 13, 23, and 33 and see what we get. Doing the same thing. I'm just going to start somewhere around the 3. Okay, here it is. So I can feel that gap there. I can feel that it's at roughly two and a half to three and a half. So three is like right in the middle. It only looks like it's moving about one, total of about one digit. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and go to 13, pull up. I find that gap there. Same thing, it's about 12 and a half to 13 and a half. It's very consistent. It's only about one digit, almost a little less than one digit. Go to the next one, around 23, pull up, and I already feel it. I feel that this is moving more than the last digit was. So this could very well be our third number. So it's starting at a little more than two and a half. It's almost starting at three. That's like a 2.8 or so. And it's coming to the right closer to 24. It's really not at the half. It's, it's, it's a little farther to the right. So it feels just from the wiggling, you know, I'll go back to, to 13. Here's my movement. I go back to 23. I feel like I have a hair more movement. And it's definitely more to the right. I see it leaning more to 24. And what this is telling me is that this gap, which in the locks is a little bit larger than the other 11, and it's a little bit oriented more to the right as far as alignment to the numbering above it. So that this gap might actually be sitting below the 23 uh, gap here, or false gate. So it's a little bit of a wider feel to it, and it's a little bit just a hair to the right. I think 23 could be our number. So I'm going to head and write that down. But I want to test a couple more just to, just to be sure. So I'm going to look back. Um, we did all the way to 23. I'm going to head and look at 33. Finding that gap. And I'm going to look at 33. So we're two and a half. To three and a half to 33 and a half and I don't feel like I'm really leaning on the four the 34 number I'm um, not nearly as much as I was back to 23 again let's look at that yeah you can see it's definitely over um, 23 and a half and then in here I'm just barely to 23 and a half And then to test the final round, we'll go look at the 7s, 17s, 27s, and 37. Same thing, I'll go somewhere in the middle here and wiggle it. Okay, pulling up on my 
shackle and I'm seeing that it's very clearly stuck at the six and the seven. Six and the seven. Let me look at 16. 16 and 17. 16 and 17. 26 and 27. Those feel good. 26, 27. Again, it's about the same distance. And then 36 and 37, about the same. So I didn't feel any difference at all. And that goes back to, again, the only one that really felt like it triggered for me was this 23. So if I go and, and, and start with our first number, we found that it was 15. And the second number we found was 29. And the third number we found was 23. We can give that a try. And now, any of these numbers could possibly be off by one or two digits. And then if you got stuck, you'll probably feel it. You'll probably feel the, the, the shackle wanting to come out, but it's just getting snagged on something. You might try to adjust these maybe by one digit, but I've found that with this process, it's very consistent. And given there's already about a digit and a half worth of slop in any of these locks anyways, you're probably gonna be okay. But just keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and, and, and try to open the lock with our newly found code. 15, past the 15 to the 29, and then just slightly back uh, to 23, and there we go. Uh, good feeling when you get it to open. So, so that's the method. It's represented by this picture uh, for finding the third number. Like I said, you could definitely just find the first two just with feel, like I described earlier in the video, and then just go through, and, and I'll show you how we would do that. Um, you would just open the lock, first two combinations, second one is 29, and then just start pulling up about every two digits or so. And then you'll, you'll have it. And it won't take you long to go around, you know, if the, if the combination answer was way on the back side, just, just slowly, you know, click and turn, click and turn, click and turn, and you can get that third digit um, that way. But, but, but here's a way to get it in, in a more predictable fashion. And, um, you know, it's just a lot of people describe different ways to find the numbers. These are the three ways that I know consistently work. Um, these two based off of feel um, and very easy finding out where does it get snagged as you're rotating with light pressure and then this one here by by doing a quick measurement in each of these four sections one at a time and then finding out where is the big gap that's going to give me my digit number three looking for that gate that has the wider uh, span on the dial and then has the the number that slides a little bit more to the right to the right and, and compared to the others in that in that same group, okay? So yeah, there's a lot of videos on how to open these locks. I don't feel like any of them pulled it all together. So that's why I did this video. And I, I hope that it becomes a standard for people trying to figure this out because you should be able to do this um, yourself uh, without too much trouble if you follow these instructions. And, and if it's not working for you, please leave a comment and, and I'm gonna try to improve it. Um, but if it does work, then please give it a thumbs up because that would be a great way for other people to find the video as well. And um, you can look in my uh, channel for other videos related to opening locks. There's one that does this same lock in just about four minutes, the whole video. Um, so it's a much quicker one. Um, but uh, thanks for, uh, for, for sticking out this long video, and uh, I hope it helps. And have a great day.